All right. The record is now on, ladies and gentlemen. So we are back here. Now remember, <clears throat> when we connect only the flanges as the you know, typical practice, now you should consider this uh, H as two T's coming together. Okay. All right, it looks like that. So we consider a T. And now, um, if you please, uh, you, you can uh, open the file that I just uh, post this morning and look at the, the property of the T. Look at the X bar and you see it's uh, 1.37 for T75 by 150 by 15.8. Okay, so now we know, um, let's say, because we now have the members, but we have condition to splice. So we need to check the rupture again. So I'm not gonna go through the yielding. The yielding is going to be the same here, okay? So for the sake of uh, demonstration, I am going to repeat only the rupture, all right? So in this case, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to recalculate the rupture because we now have shielding. And we can use the U to calculate the shear lag. U is one minus X bar over L. And for this, uh, I, I have two pictures. Uh, one is the bolted connection. Another is welded connection, but we are going to use the welds, okay? Just to uh, skip the problem with the holes a little bit. All right. Now we know that the X bar is, 1.37, that's the property of the T, okay? L is here given as 25 centimeters. So I now can calculate the uh, shear lag equal to one minus 1.37 over 25. So you see 25 centimeters is actually pretty long. So now we end up with the number equal to 0.9 five. Okay, now, all right, that, that, uh, you need to know a little bit of history about the shear lag. Uh, it's been, you know, there for quite some time. And before the current specification, there used to be some suggestions about the number. They used to give this, this number and say you, Whenever you have a situation like this, you know, whenever you have the, the situation where you cannot connect every element, you should always consider shear lag and use you no more than 0.9. This is the old number. This number is from the series of tests performed by a professor. So they got the suggestion saying that you should not use uh, the number over 0.9, regardless of what you can calculate. But again, this number is no longer in the spec. You can say this is research. And there's another lower limit, yeah? You say you should not use this one lower than 0.65, but this one doesn't have any scientific reason. It's just that when you have shear lag lower than this, it means that, wow, you are losing a third of the uh, section, right? So this is for practical purpose. If you can, if you calculate the shear lag and you get the number lower than this, you should redesign your connection because it's not efficient you are losing a third because your connection is probably too short or something like that. But, you know, I just, I just see that uh, if you look uh, closely, they have the number here. They say, you know, single angle, 0.6. With two or three fastener per line in loading. If you don't want to calculate, you can just point in. So what the heck, <laughs> right? But anyway, it, it used to be there, but. Again, these two numbers are no longer in the spec. I'm just telling you this so that you can use your engineering judgment, you know, with the, with the design so-and-so, the more you know, the better. So like in this case, 
the research used to say that you should not use the number more than 0.9. But we calculate, we got 0.945. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm not expecting the answer because for this, you know, there is no right or wrong, if you ask me. We are here to predict the strength of our structure to our best ability. This is what we call engineering, you know? We cannot never ever, you know, in any way possible calculate the precise number of the strength of our structure. No way, impossible. Because you don't know. You don't really know anything specifically down to details. You don't really know how big your section really is, right? It gets worse with the concrete. You would never know the compressive strength of the, the column that you design. You, you send the, the concrete to destroy at the lab to measure FC prime so and so. How do you know that FC prime represents your column? No, you don't, right? So we are here to predict the strength of the structure to the best of our ability. So it's up to you really to use these two numbers. It doesn't really matter. But you, you, you must know what you're doing. You must know what you are predicting. That's the most important thing to me. Okay, so given freedom, sometimes it's tough, right? Yeah. And one more thing that you need to know is this. Um, what we have here is the type of connection that we call splice. Okay? The splice is when you try to connect two things in, in the parallel line like that. Then you have something you know, like splice plate on top and the bottom. And then that thing is called splice. Okay? Uh, there is another small thing that you should know about the splice that I didn't explain last time here. That's it. For bolted splice plate, no matter how much you got for your AE, the net section that you use for the calculation should not be greater than 85% of the gross area. But that is for bolted splice plate. Okay? We have a welded one, so we are okay. We don't have to check that. Okay. Bolted splice plate would be this one exactly. That's the bolted splice plate. So if you have this as a case, you must also limit your effective net section further that you should not use the number greater than 85% of the gross section. Because you know, when you when you splice two uh, members together and somehow this fails. It's going to be very, very bad. So that's one. That's why they try. They want to limit the number. Okay. So now we are here. So you ask me, I'm not afraid. So I'm just going to go ahead and calculate my ASD. So for ASD, my rupture, my new rupture, because now I have the splice, is going to be P nominal divided by factor of safety. That is. F U A E over factor of safety. So that is 4050. Now I have my shear lag. It's point. Oops, I'm sorry. So hand goes before the head. 0.945 multiply by the net area that is equal to the gross area. over two, because the two is a factor of safety for rupture. I got 75.8 times. See, still way bigger than yielding, uh, it's still more than 60. So with, even with the, the shear lag problem, it's not a problem in the end. It's just another possible failure mode that you have to investigate. That's all, okay? So uh, let's say for LRV, 
same. P uh, P N is P F U A D, and that's uh, it's gonna turn out pretty much the same. Point seventy five four zero five zero point nine four five multiplied by forty point one, and that is one hundred and fourteen tons still way beyond 90, so it's still okay, you see. Now, is there any question? No, question? Yes. No, or did you say no, right? I say yes, I said no. I say yes, I say no, I say I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> okay, so I, I, suggest, I, I guess that's a no. Then. So let's move on to the next example. All right. So now, uh, you know, there are two ways uh, in terms of uh, design class. The first is to design something. That means you create something out of nothing. And the next uh, problem is easier. It's just to, it's an investigation problem. Okay. So we are going to verify the tensile strength of the angle 100 by 100 by 10 SS 400 with uh, 25 centimeters of welding. That's a very long weld, you know? So let's say we are gonna have uh, the welding here. On front and in the back, and it's gonna be uh, 25 centimeters long, okay? And here is the property of the, uh, the angle, okay? Cross sectional area, and then we, you have the radius of gyration in x and y direction, and then r minimum. Wait a minute, why do we have r minimum? What do you think? One thing that you should know about the angle is that that's the centroid, right? So that is perhaps the x axis. And that is the y-axis. So Rx and Ry are the radius of gyration about uh, these axes, x and y. But do you know that x and y axes of the angle are not the principal axis? Do you know that? The principal axis of the angle is not in this 90 degree uh, axis. It's somewhere like this. Okay. So what is the principal axis? Axis. What is the principal axis? Oh, all quiet on the Western front. The principal axis is the axis where you have the maximum and minimum values, right? For example, any dub, uh, doubly symmetric section like a rectangle or maybe a rectangle would be a perfect example. A rectangle will give you uh, in the X and Y axis, the maximum and minimum moment of inertia, right? That's what the principal axis is. So for the angle, the X and Y are not its principal axis. Its principal axis is somewhere else, you know, with a twisted um, uh, axis like this. And in that case, the R minimum is gonna be in this, one of these pink axes and R maximum as well. But keep in mind that R X and R Y are neither maximum nor minimum values for the R of the angle. Okay, but still, um, this one has the X and you should know now that it's gonna become the distance that the, uh, the force has to uh, travel, okay? Now, one more thing that you must know is that you see the picture here. Uh, I, I took it from the spec and there are so many ways to weld the angle. Generally, you would see this one because uh, they would try to balance the, uh, the angle because of the, uh, you know, the axis is not 
right there in the middle because it has a lake, right? So they want to try to to uh, balance the force in the member. So you would see this. So when you have this, either this or this or this. This has the welding at the end. And you see from the picture, this is the length suggested for the calculation of the shear like factor, which you see, you know, welding in the end doesn't help. You would have it anyway because you have the outstanding leg. This one is not connected. So this time it doesn't matter if you weld in the end because you still have the outstanding leg. If you, if you weld in the end, the L remains the same. And if you have the unequal uh, lengths of well, you use the length average. That's what it is, okay? So now uh, this becomes a pretty uh, simple. Um, this time I, I can do just uh, ASD because it's gonna be the same and now you know it, okay? So let's say one ASD is fine. Hope you don't mind. Or you want, you want me to do both, it's up to you. Don't be shy. If you don't say anything, I'm just gonna stick with ASD, okay? So now we know that um, when you look at this, you know you have uh, two uh, possible failures. First one is the yielding as usual. Okay, and the yielding, now the design strength is gonna be P, uh, this time is P, right? Please understand that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, in the spec they use R, right? Because R, I think, comes from resistance, maybe. But sometimes you see T because T is for tension, right? But, you know, in your statics, in mechanics, materials, sometimes they use P. What does P stand for? Anyway, just I, sometimes I sometimes I just keep changing things because I've seen so many variables in my life. I I can't be consistent. It's not my nature. I hope you understand that. Okay, it 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 doesn't really matter which variable you use. The most important thing is your understanding, understanding of the behavior of the structure. You know when you use any particular material, right? So here, yielding is going to be P nominal divided by factor of safety. Okay, so that's going to be, you know, same old, same old, FY, AG, and then divide by factor of safety. SS400, so FY is 2,500 kilogram per square centimeter. Now we have the area, which is 19. And we have the factor of safety, which is equal to five over three. And like I uh, mentioned before, you can just say, okay, 0.6 multiplied by FY, that's fine as well, because five over three is divided by five over three, it becomes three fifth, right, or 0.6. Anyway, so this is um, 30.2 tons. From time to time, you know, you may want to calculate the nominal strength first to, to give yourself the idea how much you really have and how much you deduct for factor of safety. And uh, sometimes, you know, let's say this is um, myself is roughly 50.2. So that's your nominal strength, 50.2 tons. After 40% deduction, your design strength is, is 30.2. So you see, let's say if you have, if this member has to carry the load 30.5 tons, for example, you think it's safe? Can you use it? After calculation, your design strength is 30.2. And say this member has to carry the load equal to 30.5 tons. Would you use it? No, really? Anyone else? Yes. Yes, that's a very uh, courageous young lady. Uh, what about uh, others? What do you think? You should write down. 
So just uh, two uh, courageous uh, people. You know, if it was me, I would. I would use it. I wouldn't mind. It's just 0.3 tons. How much can it hurt, right? Because after all, this is the, the predicted design strength, right? It's not even the real strength. We, we deduct the factor of safety. If, if we use it, it means that we, we may have the factor of safety slightly less than uh, three, five over three. Should not be that big of a deal. And so let me try to get this. No, no, no. The other way around. So it's only like 0.1% over strength. We are fine, you know. You, you, you can use the members like up to 3% over strength, but that's it. But again, I would not say the first person who said, I would not use it wrong. And I wouldn't say the second person is wrong either. The, it, it's, it's your freedom, you know, but sometimes when, when you have the load only ever slightly bigger than the capacity and you want to change the section, so you may end up with the, with the section way larger than what you need. So, but I wouldn't mind if it was, if it was me. So pardon me for one minute, okay? Um, I'll be back uh, quick. All right, I'm back. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's duty. Okay, so now we 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 shouldn't wait anymore, and let's let's go ahead and investigate rupture. Oops, should be blue, right? Rupture. So P nominal over factor of safety this time. Oh, I should uh, erase this first. I should calculate the shear lag first. Right? The U this time is gonna be one minus X bar over L. So it's gonna be one minus, now we have the section property here is 2.82 divided by 25. And that is 0.8. Okay, so now uh, we are losing 12% uh, of some kind. So the, uh, the rupture strength is going to be F U. Um, I, I should write A E, right? Over factor of safety. But now you, you keep in mind that this is cause U A net. So here, Four zero five zero. This is point eight eight seven multiplied by nineteen. Remember, it's rupture, so factor of safety has to be two. So this comes out to be. Let's carry on. Okay, so, all right, where, where were we? So we're here, right? And now we are looking at the final number here. That is, where is it? Okay, 33.7 tons. Hmm. Ah. Oh. 
Okay, so now we're back on, all right? Uh, so I think I said they, they made a good decision for my son not to have the exam. He's very young. It's uh, very difficult to have the exam without the answering sheet. So bless them. Anyway, it's my bad. So here we are, we have the number. And yes, as I uh, mentioned earlier, it's, it's not a bad idea to, to have the number before the factor of safety, just to, to give you some idea where you are between the, the nominal strength and the desired strength. And this is uh, 66.7 tons. So, you know, roughly we, we, we usually have of that. But then again, uh, keep in mind that we use the number after the factor of safety, okay? So sometimes the nominal uh, numbers do not tell the entire story because of the difference in the factor of safety. So in the end, now you have the design strength for the yielding 30.2 and for rupture is 33.7. So meaning, if we forget about the hula baloo and everything, it means that um, now your design strength P nominal over factor of safety is going to be equal to 30.2 tons. All right. So that means uh, the design capacity of this uh, angle because this number is less. So we use less number. Okay. Where did I get? Um, I'm sorry, I, I look at the wrong line. Uh, wow. Uh, this is uh, 28.5. I'm so sorry. That's the correct number. Okay. So in the end, uh, it should be 28.5 instead. So my apologies. So is there any question on this one? Is there any question on this one? It's all clear, sir. Pardon me? Can you speak louder, please? It's all clear. All three, what do you mean? All clear, it's clear. It's clear, okay, crystal clear. <laughs> yes, just say crystal clear. See, it's uh, easier to say as well. Okay, thank you. It's all clear or crystal clear. So that's it for this one. So let's move on to see the next one. You know, this is pretty much the same and uh, it looks a little bit old fashioned now because of the way that uh, this example still has the gusset plate for the connection. Okay, so it's, it's uh, pretty much the same thing, but this example will just uh, demonstrate how uh, we can use the formula to calculate the X bar of this uh, connection. Uh, one more thing that we should know is that um, when you have, I probably have mentioned this before, but Let's do it again here. When we have the circular section, the rectangular section, uh, we, uh, those sections are not made of SS400 or SM520. They have their own uh, stuff like uh, uh, this. So it's uh, this case, they, they used uh, TIS107. TIS, that's uh, Thailand Industrial Standard or more of gold, right? So, this be careful because the FY and the FU they're not the same as SS400. It's pretty similar but slightly less. But you know, for academic purposes, if you use the wrong number, I will be extremely critical with you because this is the basic that you have to get right. If you say you use it wrong and you argue that hey, actually it's pretty close to SS500, SS. Uh, so I, I slipped my mind, SS400, not 500, right? It's pretty close to SS400. How, how, how bad can it be? Yeah, you're right. In terms of number, they're not far apart. But in terms of concept, you're using the raw material for your work, which is fatal if the difference is huge, right? So because you use the raw material and difference is small, should not give you the excuse to be wrong. Remember, 
we should be proud of our profession. We have license. We are responsible for many people's lives and you know, asset and properties. So please get it right. It's not like the most difficult thing in the world, believe me. Okay, so now uh, to verify this, again, we have um, in ASD, we have the uh, step number one, we need to calculate the required strength. That's strength, that's my R, okay. And now you have date load 16 and live load uh, 48. So our PA is going to be 16 plus 48. That's uh, 64 tons. That's the load after the, the investigation of load combination that our uh, structure has to carry. Okay. And this guy um I'll, I'll give you more uh, tables I, i'm i may have the pdf files for for all these okay and uh, this uh hang on i'm trying to look for it the property of this uh, ag is 45.6 square centimeter and the radius gyration you don't need it now but uh, let's give it anyway Rx is equal to Ry 7.87 centimeter. So, okay, now we have the uh, yielding, right? The second stage, the uh, tensile strength. Yielding. The um, P nominal over factor of safety would be FY AG over factor of safety. So that would be 2400 multiplied by AG, which is 45.6 divided by 5 over 3. And this is equal to. 109 on top, divide by 5 over 3. And that's in, this is in tons, okay? So that is uh, 65.4 tons. So maybe I should say divide by 1,000 somewhere, okay? So, so that uh, yeah, the equation is the equation, okay? Maybe I should do the same up top as well. No, my apologies. Yeah, I should uh, write down here, divide by a thousand. So I'm sorry, folks. So that, you know, it's a, it's a true equation because that's uh, the calculation here is in kilogram per square centimeter. And then in the end, the unit becomes ton. So to make it perfectly correct, please add, uh, you know, divided by a thousand to both equations here. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, so here we go. That's a yielding. And for the rupture again, uh, we are going to have to calculate the X bar for uh, this kind of connection. So let me uh, downsize this a little bit. So you see the condition here. And if you can recall, we have the formula in the table saying that X bar here can be calculated from this formula, um, B square plus two B H. divided by 4B plus H. Now, because we have the square section and B is gonna be equal to H, and that's uh, 200 millimeters, okay? And uh, you know, uh, I kind of prefer to do it in centimeters. So it becomes um, 20 square. So I'm doing it in the centimeters, okay? 20 square plus 2B and H divided by 4B plus H. And that turns out to be 7.5 centimeters. So that 7.5 is going to be um, the X bar we can use in the calculation of the uh, shear lag factor. And you 
is one minus x bar over L, but that's one minus 7.5. The x, the L that we have is 40, right? It's pretty long, longer than your elbow. So divide by 40. So that becomes 0.812. All right, so we are pretty much ready to calculate our rupture. So P nominal over factor of safety, that's gonna be FU multiplied by U A net, okay, over factor of safety. That is 4,000 because it's TIS uh, 107. U is 0.812, the area is 45.6 divided by two. So that, you know, um, is, oh, should be divided by a thousand. And that's uh, 152 tons. Uh, I'm sorry, let's just look at the wrong place again. So many numbers. Mm, yeah, divided by two. Yeah, that's more like it. So in the end, that's uh, 76 tons. Okay, so then again, uh, there's a chill -like problem with the rupture, but it doesn't govern our design. So you may want to add more information in your summary saying that uh, yielding governs and uh, P nominal over factor of safety is 65.4 tons, okay? That's it, our final design. All right, is there any question? So that's the end of the uh, tension members. And oh, we have a slight hiccup. It's a bad thing, but it's a good thing that actually it, it ends right where it should be. Otherwise, I would have had maybe five or six minutes more, and then I would probably start the uh, compression members, which is not very nice, you know considering that oh you have so much information in 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 one session okay so let let's end it here sorry i have a question yeah sure please go ahead oh uh, where where do we get the growth area area uh, growth area. You, you you should always get it from the the, the design tables now uh, for this one i i have it but um it's not that complicated. So you, I, let's say I don't have to create my own tables to calculate the more proper things out of it. And so I basically use the uh, design catalog that's uh, readily available anywhere. So I, I haven't given it to you for this uh, section. So my apologies. I, I, I can give it to you. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll post it again uh, as soon as I have the opportunity. Okay. But uh, information like this. Um, Generally, say it's in the design table and uh, not very difficult to obtain. Now I have given you the, uh, the properties of the, the edge, right, the wire flange. And this morning I just gave more uh, on that, but we were going to use that soon enough. And uh, for this, uh, I have it, but uh, I need to find it uh, in a computer. Okay. It, it's not, say, difficult. So let's say, can I stop chair here and and I'll, I'll, I'll try to look for it in this computer and yeah, here we go. Okay, and yeah, it's gonna look like this, you know? Yeah, I, I, I can give this file to you. It's not a big of a deal, you know? Oh, this is a rectangular section. Um, let's say a uh, row, hollow section. Okay. Is it? 
Um, the one that we use is 200 by 200, this one, right? And uh, by six, and six here is the thickness. So this is the one that we use today. Um, where is the option to end? Ah, okay, here. This is the one that we use today. See, and that's the area. Am I right? Uh, cross sectional area, the third column, that's the one. Right, so this is it. Um, what the? Where's the annotate now? That's the one, okay, sorry, just gone. That's, that's the area that we use today. So just uh, basically from the catalog. So I'll, I'll, I'll give this to you uh, as soon as I, I have the opportunity. Okay, I need to just go look after a few things. Wow, it's an expected uh, incident that occurred. It just uh, threw me off balance a little bit. Okay, so that's it. I, I, I'll, I'll post these uh, catalogs in, in uh, Google Classroom, okay? Now, is, is there any more question? Uh, uh, I have another question on the yes. previous question on yeah. uh, condition B. Oh, you wanted me to go back to the to, to the. Uh, no is one? it okay? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. It is. It is, of course, absolutely, no problem. Yeah, so the central from the T. So I still wondering how do we get it? Um, I I I don't have that file with me. Uh, I I just gave it to you this morning. You have to go. You have to look. Uh, for it from from the the cut T table. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, this, the, uh, you know, this one, right? You mean this? Yeah, 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 that one. This is the one, right? Yeah. yeah, Um, I think I can share it now. So I'm just gonna stop this and I, I'm gonna open that file. I, I have uh, posted that file for you this morning, sorry. Uh, it's this one, uh, steel table cut T. You see, you, you, you get it from this one. Um, I have to share it again. Okay, you get this from this one. And uh, now because uh, we cut 150 by 150 in half, right? So you end up with 75 by 150. You see, it's this one, basically. So this is the one. Um, here, this is the one. Right, Thank you. It, it cut 150 by 150 in half. So the depth is reduced in half. The width remains the same and the weight comes down in half. You have this file and uh, in the end, it should be, it's kind of difficult to use. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Ah, I don't have it here. Uh, but sorry, yeah, but it, it it's this section and this table doesn't have it. I, I, I'm surprised. Uh, but you should be able to get your hands on this um somewhere. But let 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 me try, let me try to see if I have it here. Oh, it's it's cut in. It's not cut nicely. I I better do a better job on this one. It should be uh, axis. It's the x value here. But wow, I never see that. It, it's been cut this way. Hmm. If you print it out, it should be uh, seen better. So I'll, I'll do a better job on this one. Okay, but but that that that's where you got it from. Now it's messy. Okay, here, this is the section, but see, uh, that one got completely cut away. So I, I, I may have to recreate this. 
Okay, but that but that's how we we get it from. Okay, so sorry. Hmm. I didn't know it was just uh, separated like this. Yeah, it's a uh, X bar, and uh, it just got cut away in this uh, section. So it's a uh, basically it's, it's Y bar, right? Yeah, this one, this value. See, I got 1.78, 1.79, which is roughly around here. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's it's a y bar in the, but that that the y bar is the, the distance of the centroid because it's singly symmetric. So we don't need the, the another distance for the y axis. Okay. So that, that's it. I'm so sorry for the, for the table. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, is there any more question? Hello? Wow, it's all quiet now. All right, so if, if you are reluctant to ask me anything, let me uh, say, Stop the record first so that it, it's not dragging on too long.